shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me, and heard my calling. He brought me also out of the horrible pit, out of the mire and clay, and set my feet upon the rock, and ordered my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even a thanksgiving unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that hath set his hope in the Lord, and turned not unto the proud, and to such as go about with lies. O Lord my God, great are the wondrous works which thou hast done, like as be also thy thoughts which are to us ward, and yet there is no man that ordereth them unto thee. If I should declare them and speak of them, they should be more than I am able to express. Sacrifice and meat offering thou wouldest not, but mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin hast thou not required. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me, that I should fulfill thy will, O my God. I am content to do it, yea, thy laws within my heart. I have declared thy righteousness in the great congregation, lo, I will not refrain my lips, O Lord, and that thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. My talk hath been of thy truth and of thy salvation. I have not kept back thy loving mercy and truth from the great congregation. Withdraw not thou thy mercy from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth always preserve me. For innumerable troubles are come about me. My sins have taken such hold upon me that I am not able to look up. Yea, they are more in number than the hairs of my head, and my heart hath failed me. O Lord, let it be thy pleasure to deliver me. Make haste, O Lord, to help me. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to rebuke that wish me evil. Let them be desolate and rewarded with shame that say unto me, Fie upon thee, fie upon thee. Let all those that seek thee be joyful and glad in thee, and let such as love thy salvation say away, the Lord be praised. As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord careth for me. Thou art my helper and redeemer, make no long tarrying, O my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
The first lesson is written in the 32nd chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning at the third verse. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, into the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye speak unto my lord Esau. Thy servant Jacob saith thus, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. And I have oxen and asses, flocks and men servants and women servants. And I have sent to tell my lord that I may find grace in thy sight. And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau, and also he cometh to meet thee, and four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that was with him, and the flocks and herds and the camels into two bands, and said, If Esau come to the one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord, which sayest unto me, Return into thy country, and to thy kingdom, kindred, and I will deal well with thee. I am not worthy of the least of all thy mercies, and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I am become two bands. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother and with the children. And thou saidst, I will surely do thee good, and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. And he lodged there that same night, and took of that which came to his hand a present for Esau his brother, two hundred she-goats and twenty he-goats, two hundred ewes and twenty rams, thirty milk camels with their colts, forty kine and ten bulls, twenty she-asses and ten foals. And he delivered them into the hand of his servants, and for he drove by themselves, and said unto his servants, Pass over before me, and put a space betwixt drove and drove. And he commanded the foremost, saying, When Esau my brother meeteth thee, and asketh thee, saying, Whose art thou, and whither goest thou, and who those, whose are these before thee? Then thou shalt say, They be thy servant Jacob's. It is a present sent unto, the Lord, unto my lord Esau. And behold, also he is behind us. And so commanded he the second, and the third, and all that followed the droves, saying, On this manner shall ye speak unto Esau when ye find him, and say ye moreover, Behold, thy servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goeth before me, and afterward I will see his face. Peradventure he will accept of me. So went the present over before him, and himself lodged that night in the company. And he rose up that night, and took his two wives, and his two women servants, and his eleven sons, and passed over the ford Jabbok. And he took them, and sent them over the brook, and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there, and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Here ends the first lesson. <clears throat> My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. 
He, remembering his mercy, hath hope in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second lesson is written in the second chapter of the Epistle of St. Paul to Titus, beginning at the first verse. Speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded, in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not purloining, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Here ends the second lesson. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And you, thy ministers, with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, 
and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O Lord God, who seest that we put not our trust in anything that we do, mercifully grant that by thy power we may be defended against all adversity, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, given to thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Confident that God, God hears us when we cry out to him in our need, we now place our petitions before him. We pray for the church throughout the world, that she may be strengthened and emboldened to bring the gospel message to all men and women. We pray for our Diocese of Norwich, our Bishop Graham, and for the benefits of Colgate and Tumland. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Christians everywhere and for other churches, all of us who with common baptism seek to follow the Lord Jesus. We pray in particular for Francis, the Bishop of Rome, Bartholomew, the Ecumenical Patriarch, and for all who seek to do the will of God on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, and for all entrusted with civic authority, that they may be strengthened and blessed in their endeavors, and that they may keep before their mind's eye the poor and the most vulnerable in making decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the earth. We pray that we may achieve policies and that we may become people who more and more are able to care for the earth. We may, that we may continue to try and grow in awareness of the wonders of God's creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, for the sorrowing, for the lonely, for the distressed, for the alienated, for the misunderstood. We pray for those who feel they have no one to pray for them. We remember in particular also at this time, those who have asked for our prayers, that God may indeed inspire us to be servants, that we may aid our brothers and sisters, and that his healing mercy may be shed upon those most in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have gone before us through death's door. We pray that one day we may all join them at the banquet of all eternity. We remember also all those who mourn and for all who suffer loss of any kind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.